What's up? So today in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use automations and I'm specifically going to be going into Airtable automations, but this applies to Integramat, Zapier, as well as Airtable and probably many other internal automations and other platforms. So if you haven't met me before, my name is Ben Green. I'm the owner of Optimize IS and what we do is we have business owners probably just like you, help them with systems like Airtable for example, asset management, Asana for project management, Slack for communications, as well as a Zapier and Integramat to really connect all the systems and make everything work very blissfully. So if you're interested in that, check out the link in the description and request a consultation from me or someone on my team. And without further ado, we'll get right into the video now. So to explain automations, first I'm just going to show you the different pieces of an automation and explain what they do. So an automation is basically taking something in your workflow and making it happen without you really having to do anything. It is always based on two things, which I will go into in this video, a trigger and an action. And I think the easiest thing to think about automating is copying and pasting. So if you're ever copying and pasting an email from an Excel spreadsheet or an Airtable into an email or copying and pasting a name and pasting it somewhere else, that's the easiest thing to automate is just copying and pasting data where you're like typing in something in one place and then going and typing it in another. That's really the easiest thing to automate because you can just set up an automation and connect those two things. So how automations work, and this is going to be, we're just gonna name this automation real quick. It's always good to name them to keep them organized. I obviously have a ton over on the right that are not the best organized. So we'll call this automation tutorial. An automation starts off with a trigger. And as you see here, first choose the trigger. This is the event that starts the automation. So a trigger can be any change in data, essentially. If there's a change in a status, if it's a certain time, if there's a different field and if there's a field in here that changes and then it matches conditions that you want, or if there's something that happens in another app, like if you get an email, that's a change in data. That's a new piece of data, or it can be considered new to a software with a API in integration. And so long as you have cloud-based systems that have an API and ideally that connect with Zapier or Integramat, you can set up an automation between those two. So I'm going to just explain it here in Airtable because it's really easy to understand with this copying and pasting data type thing. So the first thing is, like I said, the trigger. And so first you choose a trigger and this is the event that starts the automation. So I just went into what the trigger is. So now we'll choose a trigger. So some examples of triggers within Airtable, and you have a few right here. So like I said, when a record matches conditions. So for example, for this record right here, this is like a row in Excel. When the record, matches the conditions of this being discovery or this being demo like one or the other you can set that up and use filters to say these are the conditions that this record has to meet in order for this to start now in Airtable they'll start instantly whereas in some other applications such as Zapier you might have like it checking every 15 minutes for a record that matches these conditions possibly in a new view or a new table. But the automation happens when there's when one of these trigger conditions is, are met. So when a record matches conditions, we just went through that one. Another thing you could use is like, if this date right here is today, then it will trigger the automation. So another one is when a record is created. So as soon as you enter a new piece of, a new record in there with new data, that could be another trigger. Furthermore, when a record is updated. So if you have this record here and say I update this and I change something in here, then that could also be a trigger. This one is very similar to the when a record matches conditions. It is just using a view. And the way that works is when you set up when a record matches conditions, you set up a bunch of filters to make a record match certain conditions. Whereas in a view, you would set up those fil same filters in the view instead of in the automation. It really depends on what you want there. I prefer the when a record matches conditions, but you could also use views and it might just clutter your view on the left-hand side over here. If you have this over here, you might just have a lot of views. So another one is at a scheduled time. So Airtable just added this so you can do like every 
every single day of the week at 5 p.m. or say only Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday at 5 p.m. or you can also make it happen all the time. So you can make it happen once an hour, maybe every two hours, every three hours, up to 24 hours, as well as like every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes, every 45 minutes, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, those are the ones with an air table. If a record matches those conditions or if it's at a scheduled time, or if a record is updated or like when, when this data changes, when this, when Airtable knows that this is happening, one of these things, that will be the trigger and that will start the automation. It won't do anything until you add the action. So some other things in here, these are all changes in data. So when an event is created, that is a change in your Google calendar. When a row is created, that is a change in your Google Sheets. So there's a new row, there's new data in there, and Airtable can, or Airtable, as well as Zapier and Integramat, they can know that that's a trigger because they'll recognize, hey, there's this new piece of data in here, and then they'll trigger. So a few more, when a response arrives from a form, that's a really easy one to set up, whether it's like Jot Form, Google Forms, etc. When an email is received in Outlook or when an event is created in Outlook calendar. So these are all, basically they're just changes in data. They're new things happening. They're new things matching certain conditions. They're just changes and updates and new data somewhere. And you can pick whether it's an Outlook email, Google Forms, Google Sheets, Google Calendar, Airtable within these Airtable automations, but that is how triggers work. So for this, I'm just gonna plug this one in because we have to choose a trigger to choose an action. So this is my favorite one. So when a record matches conditions and an example of this is if we wanted to set up a table uh, automation in this interactions table, we would just choose the table interactions and then we could add these filters that I mentioned. So like say the type needs to be discovery or if the type needs to be demo. These are when a record matches these conditions and it won't run them retroactively but it'll run when a new record matches those conditions. You always wanna run the test, so when it runs this test, it's basically just going to check and try to find a record that already matches those conditions, that way you can use it as test data. So we can run this test, and then we can click done. And so that's what a trigger is. So you basically just set up whatever it need, whatever drop downs or check marks and everything that, it needs to, that you need to set up in your trigger, and then when that change in data happens, it will then trigger your automation. So now for actions. Actions are where the magic happens. So if I click here and add an action, you're gonna see a lot more options. And the way I would think about action is when, so say you're firing a gun, you pull the trigger and then it shoots. So you pull the trigger and the important part is then it shoots. It doesn't shoot before the trigger happens you have your trigger and then you have your action. So the action in any automation platform is going to be something happening. So something happened that told Airtable that there was a trigger and then something now will happen in order for that. So like if you had somebody sign on to your service or they bought your product, you would have a change in your data. You would mark them as a paying client maybe and now you could send their information to QuickBooks, or now you could send their information to MailChimp. You could do any of those in like Zapier Integramat. So for Airtable, an action is something happening. So a lot of times it'll be that copy and paste, like that, what I just mentioned, somebody became a new client and now the record matches these conditions. So instead of copying their name and email and pasting that in your QuickBooks, and all these other places, you can just have an automation do that for you and save you that much time. So this automation is also very good for reminders. So like when say somebody comes in as a new client, we wanna send a message in a Slack channel. This happened as the trigger and now we're going to automatically have this happen. If you in Airtable, you can send emails out of Airtable. So say you just signed someone on and you wanna send them an onboarding email, you can automatically have that onboarding email sent. You can also automatically have a record created and you could have those link up if you have a linked record in there, but I won't get into that too much in this video. Basically all of these actions are different things happening. So you could send an email in Airtable, you can create a new record in any of your tables. 
You could update a record, you could find records, run a script, send a message in Microsoft Teams, and you can read through all of these, but basically just think about this is something happening that is going to save you time. And these, think about your workflow, what like from start to finish for a whole thing like maybe marketing. For example, if you have a social media calendar in your Airtable and you are posting on your Facebook on your Facebook page, you could have all of the information about the post in your Airtable and then when that date is today, then you can create a post on your Facebook pages and automatically post rather than you taking that data, copying and paste it, pasting it into your Facebook post and then it posting. And you can do that with all of these. So again, for the sales CRM, say you just hired someone or say you just onboarded someone, a new client, you can send an email to them with that onboarding email. You can also send an email out of Gmail. You can send an email out of Airtable. So there's three options to just send them that onboarding email. And you can also send them other emails maybe with updates. And so you can include a lot of this in there, whether it's creating an event, say you have you add, you manage all of your events. If you do event management, you could have all of your events in Airtable and then you could have a checkbox, say confirm event, and then it's added to your Google Calendar and then you can see all of them in your Google Calendar without going and creating an event, but you can have it managed in Airtable. So that is the premise of triggers and actions. And one thing I do wanna point out is you only ever have one trigger. There's only ever one trigger that makes this action go and you can obviously you can create multiple automations where you have different triggers that make the same thing happen but within one automation you only have ever have one trigger and then for the action you can have multiple actions so say first you might want to find records you might want to find records that match conditions in Airtable and then you could then have another action that sends a Slack message with all of those records that you found. So there's like a logical progression of these actions happening. And so there's the trigger, which will pull data. It'll find that event, that change in the data, and it'll pull everything that it can find about that record or about that Google Calendar event or about what was in that form that was submitted. And now you can pull that into your action. So you can create dynamic data based. So dynamic data changes for every single automation. And it's based on what information was included in the trigger. So for the actions, you can really make that dynamic and have it like if this client or if a client is marked as onboarded, it will send an email with their name from the trigger, as well as it will send it to their email that pulls from the trigger. And so it's really dynamic in that sense, rather than just every time somebody, it, it can be dynamic in that sense, rather than every time somebody's onboarded, it sends me an email to send, send them an email. So that's a quick example of how these automations work. So say, for example, you wanted to, every time a client is onboarded, you want to add three tasks to your project management. But in here, you can't create records. There's only a create record. So what you would have to do is you would have to go create record and say, if you wanted to add three tasks, if you had your project management, like we have this tasks table right here, so we could choose tasks and then we could choose the fields. So you can make it very customizable. And what I was saying if, that you can pull from the trigger, you can pull information from the trigger. If I wanted to pull say the client name or the interaction name, so I can pull that information in there and then I can run that test. So now in the tasks table, we, we can come down here and see that. So if I take these groups off, we can see that one all the way here at the end. So actually you can see it right here. You can see BPS pilot dash discovery. So that was created. So say we were good with that one, but we also want another task to be created. So we can create yet another record and we can create this one also in the tasks. And so really what I'm getting at here is you have one trigger but you can have multiple actions and these actions don't all have to be the same thing. Now what I could do is if I wanted to add another task name with the with some different information from that first record or maybe I didn't want it to have dynamic data, I could just say complete onboarding. I could run that test. And so now you see these two here and I could also add 
another field in here to automatically link it back up, but I'm not going to in this video. These two actions, they don't need to be the same. And you can add a third, a fourth, a fifth action in here and so on and so forth. These actions don't need to be the same. So the next action, maybe now I want to send a Slack message with these two new tasks that were added to my task management table. So now I could send a task and I would choose my Slack account and then I would come over here and I would add the record URL from the first one and I would add their record URL from the second one. So what I'm getting at here is that you don't need to have the same exact thing in every action. You can sort of split it up and especially this is very good in Zapier because you can connect a lot more apps than Airtable automations. So you could have, for example, in a onboarding process, when they come in, maybe they schedule their onboarding call in Calendly, and then that's the trigger. So a new event is created in Calendly, and then you would, could have many actions. So maybe then they're added to your sales CRM, and they're added to, they create a new project in your toggle where you maybe do time tracking. They're added as a contact in your QuickBooks. They're added as a contact maybe in your Stripe. And you can add them as a contact in all these other places. That way you don't have to go manually do that for every single client. So these are some of the triggers and actions that you can use. And again, one trigger, but you can have many actions. And an action is just doing a time-saving thing for you. So it's copying and pasting data. It's creating new user accounts, or it's creating new profiles. It's creating new contacts in other places, or it's just adding tasks to other places. So really actions, they'll save you a ton of time. And I highly encourage you to go check out the rest of the videos in the playlist on my YouTube channel for Airtable automations. But this was just an introductory video to what is the difference between triggers and actions. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button. And if you really enjoyed this video, you'll probably en enjoy this video a lot up here. It is actually an introduction to these two new Airtable automations that they just added. So the first action that they just added is find records in Airtable. And the second is a trigger, and that is schedule out your automation. So you can have it happen like every day at a certain time or at those intervals that I was talking about. So I go into a full tutorial of how to set up that trigger in action. And so if you're interested in Airtable automations, highly encourage you to go check that video out. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in that end screen right there. Have a great day.